Well, uh, thank you all for coming to Chennai Storytelling Festival 2022. This is going to be a, a workshop that I am going to lead. I am Eric Miller, and um, this is a workshop about uh, telling a long story and interacting with listeners uh, either during the story itself or after the story, asking their asking questions, asking for their resonations, uh, and uh, you know getting into the story in an interactive way. And the a story that I'm going to use as a um, uh, sample for demonstration purposes is a story that's very dear to my heart, which is The, the Tempest uh, by, by William Shakespeare. If you're familiar with The Tempest a little bit, raise your hand. Okay, some of you. Uh, but don't worry, uh, uh, if you're not familiar, you will be soon because I'm gonna tell it two times. Uh, first, I'm gonna tell it just for myself. The second time I'm gonna go through and uh, read some of the lines. So you'll hear uh, Shakespeare's uh, vo voice also. How is my voice? Is my voice coming okay? Good, good. Yes. Okay, so the story of the, the Tempest is that um, there was a, uh, a ruler of um, Milan, in Italy, and um, his name was Prospero. And um, he was a good man, but uh, uh, he was not really so interested in administration. Uh, and so uh, he spent a lot of time in his room uh, reading. And uh, he had a special interest in magic. So he had a lot of books about magic. And um, so things were going along and um, he was not really fully aware of the things that were going on in, his, in, in Milan. It's a city state. So um, what finally happened was that his brother made an alliance, a secret alliance with uh, a neighboring ruler and his brother, together with this neighboring ruler, did a coup. They overthrew Prospero. They, uh, you know, totally illegally. It was a military coup. And uh, they, they didn't quite have the nerve to kill Prospero, but they took him and his uh, daughter, who was about two years old at the time. There's no mention of his wife. We don't know who, who the, the daughter was named Miranda, but we don't know about Miranda's mother. But the father, Prospero, and the daughter were put in a small boat, a rowboat, and left in the middle of the uh, Mediterranean Sea. See, they didn't quite have the nerve to kill him, uh, but they depended on the natural elements to, to kill him. So, uh, what happened was the rowboat was gently uh, taken by the tides, by the wind, to um, an island. And uh, here, let me mute everybody. Oh my goodness, I I'm going to mute all. Yes. Yes, so the, the rowboat went to an island and Prospero got out of the boat and picked up his daughter and... Um, and they stayed on that island for um, 12 years before our story really begins. Uh, on the island there, the, he found two uh, inhabitants. One was a kind of uh, brutish uh, figure who was kind of violent and uh, uh, demanding this and demanding that and uh, Prospero kept a good distance away from, from him, that his name was Caliban. And the other inhabitant was a spirit named Ariel, who Prospero rescued. The, the, the spirit had been kind of trapped in a tree uh, and uh, uh, Prospero uh, uh, rescued him from that tree trap uh, of which it seems had done it. Uh, and so this spirit was, was helping Prospero. The one thing that Prospero had, aside from his daughter, 
was some of his magic books because his, his trusted advisor, his loyal advisor had included some magic books in the, in the boat. So Prospero had these magic books. And um, as you can imagine, he was consumed by uh, anger, by fury or, uh, about what had been done to him. So he studied his magic books and eventually found a way to control the, the, the storm, control the, the winds. You know, last, yesterday we had a workshop about Jesus calming the storm. This is a case where not through divine uh, 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 act, but through magic, uh, Prospero was able to cause a storm uh, he, to externalize his fury. And this storm was designed to bring the wrongdoers to him because the wrongdoers 12 years later were on a ship voyage to, uh, to, to uh, somebody's wedding and Prospero knew about it somehow and caused this tempest to bring the ship to his island. And uh, the, everyone on the ship thought the ship was sinking, but it was not really sinking. But uh, uh, so the, the wrongdoers came out on land. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, Prospero tormented them, especially his brother and the brother's uh, uh, ally. He, he drove them mad. He, the, 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 he facilitated, them, facilitated them having visions and nightmares. And uh, he mentions um, uh, harpies. Harpies are figures from ancient Greek mythology, half women, half bat, half bird, who uh, come and torment uh, 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 wicked people. So uh, especially his spirit, spirit, Ariel, took the form of uh, these uh, the harpies. And um, uh, one line is that th their brains were boiled within their skulls. They, they suffered such confusion and torment. Uh, and, and Prospero had them led through thorn bushes and swamps and uh, uh, all sorts of painful uh, physical places. So they had physical pain, they had psychic pain, and um, uh, finally, they, um, the, 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 the brother and the ally of the brother um, apologized because finally Prospero showed himself to them and um, they, they uh, apologized to, to, to him. Uh, as, as Shakespeare wrote in Hamlet, the purpose of art is to put a mirror up to nature. And so he put a mirror up to these wrongdoers so that they, um, so that they felt the torment. There, there are two little subplots along the way here. Uh, see, Prospero forgave that, that neighboring king. When the neighboring king apologized, Prospero forgave him. And the neighboring king had a son who the neighboring king thought had drowned, but the, the boy had not drowned. And uh, one subplot is that that young man uh, came and met Prospero's daughter. And Prospero gave his blessing to them eventually uh, uh, getting married. So this was part of the healing process that Prospero engineered, that his offspring and the offspring of his former enemy uh, would, uh, would come together. Uh, another uh, subplot is that that Ariel, that spirit Ariel, was helping Prospero in all of these uh, projects. But every once in a while, uh, uh, Ariel would say, "Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But do you love me?" <laughs> he would interrupt all of these plans with a an emotional little, uh, "Do you love me?" Or you know, "Sir, if." I, I felt bad for those people who were suffering. Uh, do, you, do you feel bad for them a little bit? So the spirit was um, 
reminding Prospero of his humanity because Prospero got so into um, uh, you know, his plan and his revenge and his justice that um, uh, uh, Ariel felt a need to bring him back to his, uh, to his conscience. So at the end, they, um, uh, uh, Prospero forgives uh, them and, um, and the, the couple is going to be married and Prospero is looking forward to returning to, to Milan where he says, my, my every third thought now will be my grave. I have accomplished what I have to accomplish, what I wanted to accomplish and um, I, I feel fulfilled. Uh, and my daughter will be, uh, will reign over the, the, the land that was mine and also the land that was uh, uh, the, 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 my, my enemy. So I, I, can, I, can, I can rest now. Uh, all right, that's the first telling. And maybe uh, I should ask for responses before I go through it again with some of the uh, line readings. Uh, Angela. Yes. Oh, is my hand up? Your hand is up. Oh, I, I'm on my phone, so I don't know how my <laughs> hand went up. Okay. Um, uh, any, yeah. Any, uh, okay, Angela, maybe you should uh, mute yourself but you, again. You, you did make clear, though, the opening of the story, which I've never understood. Oh. The whole piece around the coup. So, uh -huh. yeah. So thank you for that. Oh, and so if you read the chats, uh. Suda, Suda also is now finally understanding the story for the first time in her life, thanks ah, to you. <laughs> very good. Yes, the thing is that Prospero was, was not fully blameless. He was a yeah. little bit negligent uh, in, his, in his statecraft. Now, when Ariel, I do have a question though, when Ariel was asking if he loved her, did she love him? Was it only to bring him back to his humanity or was, there, was, she, was she in love with him? Was there a romantic piece? Uh, well, first of all, Ariel's gender is not stated. Ariel okay, is, they, is, is they. Is, she's non. She's non-binary. Non-binary. Yeah. <laughs> so did uh, they love so Ariel? Uh, Ariel is 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 uh, respectful and fond of of Prospero, but Ariel's really number one motivation is to be freed. Uh -huh. Ariel also reminds Prospero. Prospero, you promised me, uh, you know, by a certain time you would free me. And Prospero says, yes, yes, I'll do it. But first we have to finish the project. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so Aaron cool. is not looking for an ongoing relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Uh, anyone else have any uh, questions or, or comments about that first uh, run through, that first telling? Okay, now I, I'm going to go through it again a little bit, and I, I really must uh, read to you some of the uh, lines because it, it brings things out, and um, uh, it's really beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful uh, poetry, and it also clarifies the meaning of, uh, of things. Uh, you see, when Ariel uh, uh, went on that ship uh, and caused confusion, uh, he, and he, then he comes back and reports to Prospero, I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin. I flamed amazement. Sometimes I would divide and burn in many places. On the top mast, the yards, the bowsprit, I would flame distinctly and then meet and, and join. Jove's lightning, the, the dreadful thunderclaps uh, were, 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 were no match for what I, I did. The, the fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake and Prospero thanks him. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, uh, that his reason was not infected. The Prospero wants to infect their reason and, and drive them mad. Uh, but Ariel says, not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. 
all the mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then all afire with me. The king's son, uh, with hair uprising, more like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, crying, hell is empty and all the devils are here. So you see uh, all of the devilish activity uh, and the devilish intent is now thrown back at the wrongdoers uh, in an in a external way. Uh, okay, of course, I'm skipping. Uh, when when the, 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 the wrongdoers get on the island and their, their uh, assistance, Ariel leads them, I, I mentioned, into swamps and, and various painful places. But uh, at some point, the, uh, the wrongdoers raise their sword against Ariel as if to fight Ariel. So Ariel says, um, you are men of sin whom destiny uh, that hath to instrument his lower world, uh, uh, destiny has caused you to be belched up on this island. Uh, you amongst men are most unfit to live. I have made you mad. Even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. So Ariel is saying, I, I, am, I want to drive you almost to suicide. And I'll do it. Uh, okay, then, then the men raise up their swords and Ariel says, you fools, I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds or be mock, uh, stab the waters uh, as diminish one, uh, one feather on, in, in, my, in my cap. My fellow ministers are invulnerable. Uh, your swords are now too heavy. Uh, you can't even lift them. So uh, Ariel is able to paralyze them physically. Inside and out, they are uh, overwhelmed. Uh, the powers delaying, not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. So Prospero has been able to take over nature, influence nature with his inner fury, he's been able to project it onto uh, outer fear, uh, outer, outer nature. It's, uh, it, uh, you can say it's a fantasy, but we had, he had the magic to actually do it. Okay, Prospero, numerous times he says, uh, all right, my, my charms are still working. My high charms work. These mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. The, the, uh, the, 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 the king who overthrew him at one point says, oh, it's monstrous, monstrous. I thought I heard the, the wind speak uh, and, and uh, like, a, like a dreadful organ pipe. I thought the wind pronounced the name of Prospero, Prospero. And uh, by the way, that, that king uh, th thought he had seen his own son drown. And the son thought he'd seen his father drown. So uh, Prospero caused the father and son both to think the other was dead. So he's, uh, the whole thing is he wants the wrongdoer to see what it feels like to lose everything. He's giving them a taste of their own medicine. Uh, the, uh, there was a trusted advisor who uh, is in, in with this group. Uh, he's the one who gave the magic books. And now he says, um, all three of these men are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison given to work after a great time, now begins to bite their spirits. Uh, I do beseech you, those who are more able, follow them swiftly and hinder them from what this ecstasy may now provoke them to. Again, the, someone is concerned that these people will commit suicide out of the, out of the pain and torment. All right. Um, 
At some point, Prospero says, let the hunt go on. Uh, as if it's a, like, we're, we're, he, he names different dogs, mountain, fury, get them, hunt them even to roaring. So it's the metaphor of a hunt. Uh, and Prospero says uh, to Ariel and their other spirits too, uh, go, go my goblins, grind their joints with dry convulsions, shorten up their sinews with aged cramps and more pinch spotted make them than the leopard on the mountain. Give them more pinches and cramps than a leopard has spots. Mm. Now Prospero is telling, okay, my project is gathering to a head. My charms crack not. Uh, again, Ariel says, sir, they're in such pain. Uh, relent, relent. And Prospero says, I, I will soon. Because with my nobler, Prospero says, but my, my reason is nobler than my fury. I will take part in the rarer action in virtue rather than vengeance. Once they are penitent, the sole drift of my purpose will extend not a frown further. Okay, Ariel, release them. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. But the key point is that they, um, they apologize. And they do apologize. Uh, Prospero makes a couple of retirement speeches at, at this point. Uh, how he, I have bedimmed the noontide sun. I have called forth mountainous wind, mult, many winds. And between the green sea and the blue sky, I have set roaring war between the sky and the sea. Uh, uh, I have, um, Graves at my command, I have woken their sleepers, open them and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure. Uh, and uh, soon uh, I, will, I will end my work upon their senses. Uh, I will break my staff. I will bur bury it certain fathoms in the earth and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I will drown my book. Uh, Gonzalo, the, the faithful servant, is advisor, is, is, is still saying, oh, all the torment, the trouble, the wonder and amazement inhabits here. Some heavenly power, please guide us. Guide us out of this fearful country. But you see, the country is just the externalization of the wicked state of mind of the wrongdoers. So there's no escape. Uh, until in, until there's an apology. Okay, so then they apologize, and uh, the faithful advisor says, um, uh, "Oh, this has been such a voyage. Uh, in one voyage, uh, Prospero regained his dukedom." And all of us regained ourselves when no man was his own. So Prospero was saying that by facing what we did wrong uh, and suffering over it and apologizing, we, we gained ourselves again. Prospero uh, says, okay, you've apologized. Uh, I'll, I'll bring you to your ship now. Uh, and uh, let's go to let's go back to Italy, where I hope to see uh, the marriage of of my daughter and and your son, uh, and thence retire me to to Milan, where every third thought will be my grave. See, he's he's mission accomplished, and he's he's ready to pass away. And he says, "I will promise you." Calm seas and auspicious gales 
and sail so expeditious that you will reach home soon. We will reach home soon. So he still has the power over the elements and he's promising. And then here is the, the epilogue, which uh, I'll just read the, the, this is the very last retirement speech by Prospero. Now my charms are all overthrown and what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint. Now it's true, I, I must be here confined by you or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got and I've pardoned the deceiver, let me not dwell in this bare island by your spell, but release me from my bands and with the help of your good hands, gentle breath of yours my sails must fill or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. Isn't that interesting? As you from crimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. So it's sort of an admission from Prospero that, that he did perhaps commit some moral crimes in, in uh, uh, causing so much torment. Uh, okay, uh, why don't you, everybody write in the chat section, one image, one situation, one line, that really caught your attention, captured your imagination in this in this telling. I told for half an hour that that qualifies as a long story. So just uh, let's go to um, to the chat and everyone just type in an image, a line, a moment, a situation that is vivid to you. Hmm, Ariel's longing. As we discussed, Ariel seems to have a, certainly a longing to be free, but also a, a longing for Prospero to, to uh, you know, not lose himself in, in hate and power. Yes, from now on, every third thought will be my grave. It's not a suicidal statement, but it's certainly a statement that um, hmm, I've had enough and I, and I can rest in peace. I've done enough. My reason is nobler than my revenge, but my reason only came back to me if I'm Prospero. My reason only came back after I got my revenge. I could not feel reason uh, while, the, while the wrong was still unpunished. First there had to be the, the punishment, then there can be calm. The, a great question and you know, poetic element uh, in this story is how in the world did Prospero control the tempest? control nature? And what does it mean for a character's internal emotions to affect the outside like that? Okay, if it's a god, we understand the story. But for a human, is it, okay, it's fantasy, uh, per, I suppose, but, um, but still, what, think about it, feel about it. What does it mean that, um, see, Ariel says, we are ministers of fate. Prospero has, has gone into the realm of ministering fate. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yes, it's a powerful story of revenge, but also forgiveness. And Prospero goes out of his way to set up his daughter 
with, uh, with the son of his former enemy. Uh, you know, the, the daughter is not forced to choose him, but um, the daughter likes him. So, so Prospero is a, is a peacemaker, but justice first. Does this remind you of anything? In your own life, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, give you activities in a in a couple minutes. Mary, Chris, you say that's a very hard thing to do. Are uh, you saying it's hard to control nature, or it's hard to forgive, or something else? I mean, it's hard to forgive, and had her had his daughter um, be uh, with the enemy or with the, with the, and with Ferdinand. Mm -hmm. But uh, his enemy apologizes and uh, he okay. forgives his enemy. And um, uh, see the... Um, I mean, before that, um, hmm. it hard to risk for a normal person maybe um it might be hard to risk with your daughter and think of um not re revenging not revenge mm -hmm. uh, ariel the spirit uh sings to the uh to the young man the 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 the, the son of uh uh, of the um, the wrongdoing king. Remember, the son thinks his father was drowned and the father thinks his son was drowned. So Ariel, uh, in furthering this uh, uh, idea uh, with the son, he sings to the son, uh, full fathom five, thy father lies. Fathom is a distance. So your father lies at the bottom of the sea. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth, doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. So he's giving the son, um, uh, he's misleading the son. He wants the son to suffer too. Uh, but it's not a full death pronouncement, right? It's saying nothing of him that doth fade but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. So Ariel is saying, your father is being transformed. And I must read one other uh, 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 section here. When Prospero is in the, at the height of his um, creating all these illusions of, of terror for the wrongdoers, uh, he also creates an illusion of uh, uh, lovely, gentle Greek goddesses setting, bringing fruits and vegetables and grain for the for the wedding of his son, his daughter and and um, and and the young man. So he's giving a beautiful vision to his his daughter, and he's giving the ugly vision to the people who were ugly, but uh, in the Around this time, Prospero, um, uh, he says, our revels now are ended because the, the wrongdoers are coming and he has to deal with them. He says, our revels now are ended. These our actors were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, yea, the, the great globe itself and all which it inherit, all of it shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded with a sleep. So he's, he's saying his own constructions are gonna dissolve and the whole world is going to dissolve. So what's it all about? That's why it's important that he, he remember his, his love and his conscience. Because it's all going to dissolve.
Yes, uh, uh, Jean. I was curious, Eric, what you think it was Ariel who created many of the illusions of terror initially, but it's also Ariel who's the one that reminded Prospero of his humanity. So Ariel is first the first to change and to no longer wish to continue tormenting. Yes, well, Ariel is working for Prospero and will only be released if Prospero's mission is successful. So Ariel is under pressure to do uh, what Prospero commands, but Ariel seems to approve of the of the mission. He just wants um, he he doesn't want it to go too far. Mm -hmm. So he reminds uh, Prospero of the importance of love. But Ariel uh, Ariel has special hallucinogenic powers. He can he can make people hallucinate uh, a lot. Mm -hmm including seeing many spirits, good or bad. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the putting in the boat, what will happen? Well, it leaves it up to Mother Nature, right? And um, somehow uh, Mother Nature was on Prospero's side. And again, the great thing to chew on, one great thing to chew on in this story is how did Prospero have this good relationship with, with Mother Nature, even to the point of being able to create a storm? How is it possible? Could we do it? Could you, any of you do it? We like to think know. we'd find a way, right? If we were stuck on an island for 12 years uh, we'd, and we had some magic books, we'd try to find a way but um, Prospero found it. And of course, this is uh, Shakespeare's final play or one of his final plays. And it's widely seen as a metaphor. Prospero's controlling of things is seen as a metaphor for being a playwright uh, and being an artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As an artist, we create a world mm -hmm. and uh, we put the mirror up to uh, nature. Okay, so now I want to invite you. Uh, oh, uh, okay. I just want to invite you now to take a couple of minutes to to write. Uh, I'll stop talking and just write some notes to yourself about. Um, did you ever feel wronged? And uh, uh, what happened? Uh, ha have you been able to get justice? Are you still planning justice? Does this story give you any ideas about getting justice? See, Prospero primarily, I think he, he awakens the sense of guilt in, in the people and is able to project that guilt into uh, uh, painful external events and also painful internal events where they, 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 they lose their ability to think and they're overwhelmed by torment. Um, so um, uh, have you, do you, does any situation come to mind where you felt wronged? Uh, what did you do about it? What, what might you do about it? Does this story give you any, any ideas about what, what you, you might do about it? So this can be a, a situation that actually happened, can be an imaginary situation. Just take a few minutes to, um, to think about a situation where you were wronged or a character was wronged and, and how you or that character dealt with it or, or could deal with it. And if you can take any inspiration from how Prospero dealt with it. Okay, so just take uh, four or five minutes to, to uh, think and, and write on this, okay? 